This video corresponds to chapter 13 of this book and in this chapter I'm gonna discuss a stress singularity and then show the effect of a stress singularity in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So if I switch over here, this is the principle behind a uh, singularity. Uh, if you have an element and you put a force on the corner of an element, then a simulation program will calculate the stress by dividing this force by the typical area of this element. So th you get your stress. But when you do the same with just a finer mesh, a smaller element, the area is smaller, the force is the same, so the stress will have increased. So to avoid this, you will have to model rounded corners in your, in your analysis, or at least be aware of this effect because uh, this cannot really happen in reality. You can never put a, a force on an infinite sharp corner. So if I now switch to SOLIDWORKS, I can show what this means. So you can see the stress singularity easily in SOLIDWORKS simulation. I uh, use a template again. I showed how to set up this template in chapter one so and, and the video that corresponds to it. So then if I sketch a simple block on this area, like this. It uh, doesn't matter which dimensions there are at this point. And then I'm going to do a simulation and I can already see the effects of a stress singularity. So I'll create a new study. I'll fix the lower part, so the, the under part of this block. Then I'll put a, a force on a line that I forgot to draw, so I, I have to go back to the model and draw, for example, a center line, like that. I need that line to enter the direction of the force. So I need to set view sketches on so I can select this line later on. So now I'll put a, a force on this edge in this direction. Uh, I'll make it uh, 100 Newton and I don't see it yet so probably it's in the block so I have to reverse the direction. Yeah. So now you see the arrows and now I will have the effect of a stress singularity. So uh, save this part and then I'll run it. And I can see that it looks a bit weird, so SOLIDWORKS has exaggerated uh, the, the deformation. I'll put it to true scale, and what I see now is that on this line, I can, I can probe it for example. On this line I get a typical stress of 5e minus 1 newton per square millimeter. So I have to remember that, so it's uh, 0 0.5. So, uh, did, I, did I see that correct? It's uh, the von Mises stress. Check it again. Uh, I'll probe it. So the Van Mises stress over here. I did another chapter on that, so you can check it over there. What the meaning of the Van Mises stress is. So it's a uh, 0 0.6 newton per square millimeter, and then I can duplicate this study like that, and I could rename it, for example, and rename it a uh, finer mesh. And then I'll put a, a stress concentration, so uh, a mesh control. I'll put uh, more elements on this edge, so I'll drag it over there. And create the mesh, see what's uh, resulting right now. Uh, you see a little bit of a finer mesh. Maybe I can increase the mesh control so I can edit the one I've created here. Uh, just a little bit finer. Here I can enter a typical mesh size, so I'll enter a 0 0.7 for example and create another mesh. See if it's got a better result, or a more defined result. So now you can see the elements are a lot smaller and I'll save again and run this study and because the stress now, the force now gets divided over a smaller area, I will get a a finer concentration over here. So now you can see if I probe it again, just now I had 0 0.6 newton per square millimeter and uh, now it's 3 
so it's a, a factor of what is it five over five higher and the finer I choose this mesh the higher the stress will be so you should be aware of this fact in reality there will be a, a very local yield over here in in this line a very local yield which wouldn't really matter for your construction uh, it's just good to know that you don't report these really high stress values that are actually um, not relevant for the deformation or the stress in your model so that was the video corresponding to chapter 13 thanks for watching